Hey, my name is Chuck Fresh from Fresh and Felicia. Today we're going to talk about this guy. It's the Mock Wheel Tour Plus. It's a beast, I'm not going to lie. It weighs about 80 pounds, but that's because it's got a ton of power and a ton of battery. There's a lot of energy in this e-bike. I mean, it's for real. This is the kind of bike you want to take to the beach, you want to take to your dirt trails, but you can also ride it on paved trails like a cruiser as well. It's super comfortable. It's an awesome ride. Front suspension is adjustable. Um, it does not have rear suspension, but you could put a suspension seat in here if you needed to. You've got the big four inch knobby tires for just about any terrain. I mean, you could ride this thing through snow. We're gonna take it on a beach a little bit later. So this video is gonna talk about unboxing and assembly, and we'll go over some of the controls on here because it's a new set of controls for 2022. A little bit different if you had an e-bike in the past. So I need you to know there's a couple of things that you need to know <laughs> before you get yourself in trouble. I'll show you what all that stuff is too. So let's get into it. All right, the first thing you're going to want to do is find the boxes. This is the big box, but there's two smaller boxes inside, and there's a, a great reason for this. The first one is called the accessory box, which is labeled perfectly, and there's another box which is pretty heavy, so get ready to uh, lift that bad boy out. That's the battery, and it's a pretty hefty battery, so uh, use a little uh, muscle strength there to get it going on. So first thing you want to do is open the accessory box. You're going to see all the cool stuff that they give you. This is all free it's all included normally a lot of other bike companies will charge you for all this stuff you get a really nice tool set with just about every tool you're ever going to need to do anything with this bike and this is interesting they actually give you an air pump this is the first time out of about 20 different e-bikes i've seen that and that is really handy because you could throw it in your bike bag and take it with you and it's nice and small too and here's the instruction manual with uh, all the assembly stuff so step two you're going to want to charge the battery the first thing you're going to want to do is get that battery on charge. It has a little bit of a charge from the factory, but uh, for a full charge, it's gonna take anywhere from like four to six hours, you know, depending how long it's been sitting. It could take up to uh, about four hours. I think it took mine about three and a half, four hours. So you'll see it turn red, just plug that bad boy in, and then we're gonna head back over to the box and do the complete unboxing once we have that battery set up. All right, so best easiest way to do it here is to tip it over on its side, so you don't have to deadlift it straight out. And if you're a muscle man, you can deadlift it and make it part of your workout. And then you're going to gingerly, very carefully cut these straps off, these tie down straps. And they're all plastic, nice sharp pair of scissors will do it. But you don't want to cut into the tire and you also don't want to cut the cables. And you also do not want to uh, scratch your new bike because that would look terrible. Now you can touch it up if you need to, but uh, why do that if you have to? It's a pretty thick one over here that holds the front tire together. And I had to slide this off. Actually, the tire spokes were kind of weaved into the pedal here. No big deal. There's nothing bent here. It looked pretty straight. So uh, they have to do some amazing logistics to get a bike of this size into that box so they can send it to you. Just pull that off and put it aside for later. We're going to need this soon. And then you can uh, just continue to cut the rest of the stuff off here. You don't have to take it all off, but uh, again, be very, very, very careful. There's a lot of cables in here. You don't want to cut those cables accidentally because that will shut you down. Then you got to rewire the whole thing and it just won't work. Each one of these cables has a specific function and is tied into the onboard computer. And uh, yeah, it's just a no bueno if you cut one of those. All right, so we've got most of the stuff off here. And in order to install the wheel, you're going to have to do a couple of things here. And I found it easiest to flip it over. The first thing, they put this spacer, this big bar in here. You don't need it for anything else, but they put it in there so the front fork doesn't bend during shipping if something gets on top of that box. That's really a smart idea. It keeps it nice and straight, and you won't need that for anything else. You can discard it. It's a pretty nice bolt, though, with a couple of nuts on there. So uh, when you're installing the tire or the wheel, make sure you open those nuts a lot. You're going to need a lot of space to let it drop in there. I mean, go almost all the way to the end. You don't have to take them off, but uh, go almost to the end. You can see I actually didn't do it enough when I dropped it in here. You're going to see the front, uh, the front disc brake caliper, and you're going to need to put that disc in there. So you, it can only go in one way. You see the disc caliper there? And then you have the disc itself. So you have to drop the tire. And this is why it's easier if it's upside down because gravity can help you. You're going to kind of slide it right into that caliber. It only goes in one way. Once you kind of wedge it in there a little bit, it shouldn't be too tight. Normally it's not too tight. I mean, it's normal to have a little bit of tightness, but uh, it shouldn't be so tight that it precludes you from putting the wheel on. And then see, I didn't loosen it enough, so I had to loosen it a little bit more. 
just to be able to let gravity do its job and let that wheel fall right into that. There it is, right in there. So loosen that. So you need like a bunch of space out there on both sides too. So don't be afraid to loosen them up. They come off, you can screw them right back on. There they go, right into the fork. Spinning nicely, perfect. And then you can go ahead and tighten these guys up. I just um, finger tighten, just a little bit of tightening on the uh, bike there. At the end of this installation, you can go through and tighten everything up. Just double check everything before you take your first ride. But just enough to get things going on, just in case you have to take it off for whatever reason. Sometimes things happen. All right, so I just while you have it upside down, you can see where the battery goes. And it only goes in one way, and I'll show you how to do that too. There's not a lot of clearance there. Then you're going to flip the bike right side up. Now it's starting to look like a bike, right? There's really not a lot to this installation. Now you need to install your handlebars. And this is a little tricky too. What they give you is this uh, this bendable handlebar riser, which is very, very nice. You can kind of set the handlebars wherever you want. And that's pretty cool. So this is just the standal, standard handlebar attachment. You just take your Allen wrench. Again, all these tools come in the package. You're gonna have to take it off. And also you're gonna have to take the onboard controller, computer monitor display off as well because you can't really slide it underneath there when you're installing the the handlebars it's a little tricky so take that off it's just two little screws uh you can use the the allen wrench for that as well make sure it's the right way of course you want to have your shifter on the right hand side when you're looking at it and just slap it in there now this is going to take it's a little easier with two people but you can do it with one and just put that cover back on there and use your allen wrench to screw it in there and tighten that up real good now you can see where people ask you, where, where do I tighten this? There's a really neat little marker inside here. So you just line that up so you know it's perfectly centered. Not a lot of handlebars have this. This is actually really helpful. And then we just put our speedometer back on. It's gonna have a wire on it, of course, but that's no big deal. You can just hang there until you put it back on right over the middle there. So it's right there in your face. And you can see exactly what you're doing. That's gonna show you your odometer, your speedometer, and how much power you're using. And again, you can adjust this to any position you want. If you want it closer, you can bring it up. If you like your handlebars higher, you can do that too, like a cruiser. Now you're gonna install your fender and your headlight. Now this is one bolt to control them all. It's kind of like Lord of the Bolt. So you're gonna put the headlight on first, and then you're gonna pop that through. There's a little hole there in the front fork, and then on the back end, you're gonna screw the back of the fender in. A little tricky, but not too bad. And then there's two little Two little bolts down here on the bottom, which uh, this can be, the last one can be a little tricky because there's some tension on it. So you really have to hold it into place. All right, next up, let's get the pedals to the metal. They are marked left and right. And what's really nice is printed on the on the, uh, the actual pedal here, actually, which way to twist it, which is super helpful. Normally they have stickers or they don't have anything at all, but Mach Wheel did a nice job and told you exactly which way to twist it. Um, I'm not sure what the exact torque is, but just give it a real, real, real good tug. Not over tight. You don't want to strip the nut, but uh, just real tight so uh, it, you're not, you're, they're not going to fall off. You don't want them to fall off. They do give you the hand pump, which is nice, but I use a little portable battery-operated air compressor. If you want to pump up the tires to 20 PSI is what they recommend. Most of the 4-inch tires are about 20 PSI. So make sure they're all inflated. And you're going to come back to your battery battery's turned green now the charger's turned green is ready to put it in so the bottom's going to go in first and it snaps in and then you're going to snap in the top just like that now it's not a lot of clearance there it only goes in one way the key is really not necessary it does come with two keys but it's only necessary if you want to take the battery off you can charge it outside there that's great or you can charge it on the bike and then power it up with the little button underneath here make sure everything works and boom we're ready to go this is your half twist throttle. Make sure you don't twist that while the bike's powered on or you're going to put a hole in your drywall. Believe me, I've seen it done. Seven speed Shimano shifter. Very, very nice. Easy to use. This is the standard on most e-bikes as well. Um, and it's got, uh, it's got a nice little package here. This is basically everything you need. They are, I don't believe they're hydraulic brakes. You can upgrade if you need to, but I've never really seen much of a difference in the hydraulic, but a lot of people will argue that. Adjustable front suspension. You can make that as loose or as tight as you want it. And it does not have rear suspension, but a nice little padded seat with some good springs underneath too. And this all comes standard. It's kind of an upgraded seat as well. The welds look very strong. So you can take this on the dirt trails, do a little mountain biking with her and she's not gonna fall apart. 
and that is awesome seems very very well made and you can put a front basket on there if you want to as well so that's pretty cool here's the spec 750 watt motor 48 volt 16 amp hour battery up to about 45 miles to charge depends how much you pedal it's hard to establish range because there's so many variables with a two-year warranty so here's the controller this is what you have to do to turn it on you're going to see this little controller it looks a little different in 2022 there's less buttons so you see the m the mode button on the bottom you're going to hold that for a second or two and she's going to pop on she's going to energize and you're going to see your display kick on and you can see it's in pedal assist one you can change that all the way up to pedal assist five there is a way to get into the back end and change the pedal assist miles per hour i think the pedal assist one caps out at about 10 miles an hour which is a comfortable little speed now you can cycle through you can do um your a couple of different settings here it's going to give you ride time your odometer your trip meter just press the m on the bottom now if you hold these two buttons together you can get into the modes and you can look in the manual look on the website and there's a bunch of videos which will tell you what all these things are for you probably should change them out of the box but you do have that flexibility to change some of the things if you want to um, another thing about this, if you hold the bottom down, there's walk assist. This is different because normally in walk assist, you let the bottom button go and it stops walk assisting. This one will keep going until you hit the brake pedal or hit that button again. And also, if you hold that down, it will kick in a cruise control. It comes with headlights and a horn on the separate switch too, which is real nice, a lot easier. Some people couldn't find them on the old bikes. But that's about it. Putting it together is pretty easy to do. You're up together and ready to ride as soon as that battery's charged. Take it through dirt, on the sidewalks, on your favorite trails, or even to the beach, which we're going to show in a later video today. It's an awesome bike. I think you're going to love it. Tour Plus by Mach Wheel.